Swamps of the African Congo is the largest swamp in the world. The Laikawala Swamp is 55,000 square miles in size. This should give you an idea of just how big the swamp is. The swamp is 80% unexplored. Very few civilized people venture into this swamp because of the harsh conditions. But tribespeople living around the swamp say that there are several creatures that live there that are apparently living dinosaurs. When they are shown pictures of different dinosaurs, they identify without hesitation the hepatosaur and the triceratops as creatures that they have observed in the swamp. The hepatosaur that was identified by the natives has the name Mokele Mbembe. The tribesmen say that the creature lives mostly in the shallows of the swamp and is seen in the very early morning and at dusk. Mokele Mbembe is described as being mostly nocturnal and very territorial. Natives do not like to have encounters with this vicious creature. However, they say that they have killed and eaten the Mokele Mbembe before. Cryptozoologist Roy Mackle has explored portions of the African swamp and has written a book called A Living Dinosaur. The book details the regular encounters that tribal people have with the Mokele Mbembe and the search for evidence of its existence. This creature has been seen by many people, including African natives, explorers from the U.S., an African biologist, and government officials from the Republic of Congo. Unfortunately, because of the harsh environment and the dense swamp, no high-quality pictures have yet been taken of the creature. Around the same region of the Congo, the people tell of a creature they call Nagobu. When the natives are shown pictures of dinosaurs, they identify the creature as being very similar to the Triceratops and the Styracosaurus. It is described as having six horns and is known for killing elephants with them. Across the globe in South America, a dinosaur similar to Mokele Mbembe has been seen. For over 200 years, there have been reports of people seeing large reptile creatures that look like the extinct dinosaurs of the textbooks. In 1907, Colonel Piercy Fawcett of the British Army was sent to mark the boundary waters between Brazil and Peru. Colonel Fawcett was an officer in the Royal Engineers and was well known as a meticulous recorder of facts. While in the Madre Swamp, Colonel Fawcett saw an animal he believed to be a Diplodocus. He also stated that stories of a creature that looks like the dinosaur Diplodocus were confirmed by many of the tribes east of Ocale. Pterodactyls, flying reptiles which were thought to have gone extinct over 65 million years ago, are seen in many parts of the world today and in the recent past. Many legitimate reports have been recorded over the past 200 years. From San Antonio, Texas to South America in the Amazon rainforest to the islands of Papua New Guinea, people are still seeing these winged reptiles. The creatures have various names in different places throughout the world. In Papua New Guinea, there are three known species which are called Ropens, Indava, and Sekebale. And in the Congo, they are called Kongamato. These creatures are nocturnal and seldom seen during the day. This has been confirmed the world over. However, there are still a few sightings that occur during the day. The Ropen of Papua New Guinea is seen occasionally by the native people. They say that the creature looks like a flying reptile with no feathers. When shown pictures of different birds and dinosaurs, they identify the Ropen as looking very much like the pterodactyl. The people of New Guinea say that the Ropen is a meat-eating, flying reptile that is mostly nocturnal. Its abdomen glows as if it has some sort of bioluminescent bacteria present in its intestines. In South Africa and Ethiopia, the natives describe a creature similar to the one seen in Papua New Guinea. They call the creature Kongamato. It is often seen in the jungles of South Africa. They are described as being featherless and nocturnal. One account from 1923 from Frank H. Melloland, an explorer and author, states that he collected reports from natives of an aggressive flying reptile they called Kongamato. He said that the natives were occasionally tormented by these creatures and described them as being featherless with smooth skin, having a beak full of teeth and a wingspan of between four and seven feet. When shown illustrations of pterosaurs, Melloland reported, quote, 
Every native present immediately and unhesitatingly picked out and identified it as Kongamato. Another account was given by Montana resident Duane Hodgkinson. Mr. Hodgkinson was in the Army in 1944 and stationed in New Guinea. While out on a trek to one of the local villages, a friend, a local guide, and Mr. Hodgkinson observed a very large pterodactyl take off from the ground and fly through the air. Mr. Hodgkinson states that he knows what he saw was a pterosaur, and this is a composite sketch of what he says he saw. His eyewitness story can be watched online at youtube.com. In 1971, Australian psychologist Brian Hennessy was in Papua New Guinea. He states that he and the men he was with saw a large flying creature that in his words looked prehistoric. He described the creature as having no feathers, black to dark brown in color, with a wingspan of at least six feet. He states that it also had a very long tail. There are many eyewitness accounts given by native peoples from Africa and New Guinea, but there have also been eyewitness accounts from people all over the world who have seen very large pterosaur-like flying creatures. The states in the U.S. where reputable accounts have come from include Alaska, Texas, California, South Carolina, and Washington State. The San Antonio Light, a newspaper of Texas State, reported on February 26, 1976, that three local school teachers were driving to work on an isolated road to the south of the city on February 24, when they saw an enormous bird sweeping low over cars on the road. They reported that the bird had a wingspan of 15 to 20 feet and leathery wings. After the incident, the teachers all identified the creature they saw as a pterodactyl. Some skeptics excused these sightings with the explanation that the witnesses were just seeing giant fruit bats. The problem with this argument is that giant fruit bats, or flying foxes, do not fit the descriptions given by most of the eyewitnesses. The common features look nothing like fruit bats. They include a head with a pterodactyl-like protrusion, very long tail, very slow wing flap compared to bats, glowing bellies, and in many cases a much larger overall body size than the giant fruit bat. The fruit bat hangs upside down and the ropen by eyewitness accounts is said to sit in an upright position when perched in trees. Also these pterosaurs are seen in places where giant fruit bats are not found. The examples and testimonies given here are just that. They are a brief summary of evidence that exists. At the end of this video, you will be given a list of references including books and websites where you can learn more if you wish. If you do your own research, you can come to your own conclusions and make important decisions about what you believe about the world, history, the future, and how you fit into it. So now you might be asking yourself, how can this be? This doesn't fit with what I've learned about the dinosaurs in history. The dinosaurs were supposed to have died off millions of years ago. How did they survive? Why does it even matter? The Bible gives simple, rational explanations for all these questions and in fact has answers for many questions that you might have. You ask, can the Bible be trusted? Here are some facts about the trustworthiness of the Bible. No other ancient document or book even comes close to the Bible in terms of total supporting evidence for accuracy and trustworthiness in passing down of information contained in it. There are over 24,000 ancient manuscripts of the New Testament that exist today. The Old Testament, also called the Torah, has stood the test of time as well, and with the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls in 1947, verified once and for all that the Old Testament has been transcribed with amazing accuracy down through the ages. These manuscripts prove that the copyists took great care in going about their work passing along the Bible in an unchanged form. No scholar has a problem trusting Homer's Iliad, which had only 643 supporting manuscripts, with the oldest copy being written 500 years after Homer actually wrote his work. There are only seven manuscripts that remain of Plato's works today, yet no scholar has a problem trusting these seven manuscripts are authentic and trustworthy, even though the manuscripts that remain are copies that were written over 1,000 years after Plato wrote his originals.